Okay, so um, this morning I just wanted to uh, share two verses, uh, which is um, which are from Proverbs, and one is from Proverbs eighteen and verse um, seven, I think. Um, Proverbs eighteen and verse seven. It says, "A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul." You know, um, the verse before that also talks about uh, you know speaking correctly and then you know wrong speaking and all that and and uh, you know it says a fool's lip enters into contention and his mouth calls for blows and all the kind of talking and maybe provoking to anger etc but verse 7 says a fool's mouth is a destruction and a very interesting thing and his lips are the snare of his soul okay so that's one thing that we see then we move to um, proverbs 21 and verse 23 okay it says whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles okay so we see that there is a connection between the words that we speak and our thoughts imaginations um everything that goes in the soulish realm right imagination thoughts uh thinking um maybe whatever we discussed this morning you know uh, about anxiety worry and so on so there is a link between the words that we speak right so it says uh, whoever guards his tongue um keeps his soul from troubles which means that you're actually keeping yourself your thoughts your worries and everything it's it's kept right? and if you look at um the the sorry why is John wanting to join this class? Blessy. Blessy is first year student, right? Okay. Okay, I'll just admit him. Okay, so uh, verse 7, uh, it, uh, Proverbs 18, verse 7 says, you know, uh, lips are the snare of the soul. Okay, so which means what is a snare? A snare is a trap, right? So, which means the words that we speak are actually a trap. Trap for our thoughts, imaginations worries and so on it's like a, if you imagine a trap and you want to trap an animal or trap something just imagine are the words that we speak are actually similar to that okay so the uh, so which, which means you know if you put it in a positive way like this here it says the words that we speak are a snare for the soul if you if you turn it around which means that the words that you speak edifying um the truth of god's word it is actually a snare, it is a trap, but it's a trap for the good things, right? Which means your your soul, your you know, your, your thought realm, uh, the whole realm of imagination, uh, the whole realm of, you know, whether you're worrying or going to be full of faith, it's connected to the words that you speak and it's going to be in a positive way, right? It can either be in a negative way where you're catching worry, where you're catching anxiety and you're trapping you know, all these things which are affecting you. Or it can be in a positive way where it is faith and uh, you know, peace and, and all the other good things, right? So, uh, so that's one thing that I just wanted to share, that there is a link between the words that we speak and what goes on in our minds, right? And, uh, and if we would be careful, if we would be discerning, um, um, if, we, if we would actually quieten ourselves down, right? We will save ourselves um our thought realm uh a lot of trouble right okay so let's uh, let's pray father we thank you lord for this uh, for these two verses and um the instruction that is there and the wisdom that is there lord and i just pray father god that we will be discerning lord the words that we speak are directly connected to the to our thoughts and what goes on in the thought realm lord maybe fear or anxiety or worry or um lord or, lord i just pray that we will speak those right words and may the words that we speak be edifying. And when we speak the truth and declare the truth, Lord, may it be a snare, a snare for good things, Lord. Faith and love and peace and joy. Lord, I just pray all these, Lord, would be ours, Lord, uh, even as we speak edifying words. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, just wanted to share. Okay, so we've been looking at the last uh, aspect of um, 
of uh, yeah the partnership principle and then i think we looked at the um yeah i think we stopped there right partnership okay so partnership we understand that we can you know do so much more when we collaborate because we uh, you know um we have the the common resources we have the common abilities um and everything you know it, it works together so that your strength is multiplied greatly right and there is a greater impact when we always um collaborate you know if you, if you actually look at uh, the success of some of those um some of the things that are you know made available for us in terms of technology right we were looking at how a google search or how the sharing of information has actually resulted in you know greater learning right if, uh, and also if you look at um, if one were to look at uh, for example the success of let's say facebook or the success of instagram and so on you know the the whole uh, the whole uh, you know the concept behind this is that you share you connect and share right that's the basic premise right you connect you share and everybody wants to do that and therefore this these these platforms have you know either they they've grown to such an extent of course it has its positives it has its negatives but the fact is that there is a multiplying effect when we partner right okay so the next one that we the last one that we see in the win win you know creating a win uh, win win situation or relationship is the satisfaction principle okay so it means that um, uh, when we say satisfaction principle the fact that you know a, a, a team is together um, the at the core of it is that when when they enjoy being together right when the companionship or they working together you know, learning together and uh, you know there are maybe common activities that are being done then there is uh, there is a deep sense of contentment and satisfaction okay because you are achieving things together you are growing together and and so on okay so john c maxwell talks about how shared memories create a bonding environment so maybe you know um, so what is a shared memory shared memory so when you say something is memorable okay let's say you okay like uh, say sri radha's birthday and then you, <laughs> okay ah uh, she didn't come to class but then but then let's say um, you have a you know you have a you, you do something some surprise or something now that becomes a shared memory right um, so that shared memory in any in any team or any um, you know even even if you if you look at a like a working professional office kind of environment these shared memories actually uh, create uh, bonds you know brings the team together right so we are looking at win win relationship so these things would actually help right like some of us are very task oriented okay i want to get the job done and then that's it i want to go my way right but then if you look at you know maybe as a leader if you if you're looking at a team as small as maybe two people three people uh, you know are we creating shared memories or opportunities for shared memories right um, like for example in our office um, uh, we have potluck three times in a year or whatever two, twice so everybody brings cooks so we have three different teams uh, for three different potluck uh, lunches so everybody cook something brings and then we all eat together right so we had one recently um and there's a team which brought uh, and pastor is a great cook uh, if in case you haven't uh, <laughs> tasted so you know so all these things actually create uh, a bonding environment brings the team together you know so so are we creating that so you can intentionally as a leader or even as a team member uh, create you know uh, opportunities for shared memories right okay opportunities for learning as well you know when the team grows when the team is you know out of the tasks that they are doing and out of the uh, maybe some learning that they are experiencing uh, 
when they share their learning right when they share the learning like uh, in a in a typically in a in a work environment you can create an opportunity to share the best practices right so maybe there is a, uh, you know there is an accounts team maybe there is a you know media team you know um so they can share their best practices you know which has actually resulted in accomplishment right so this is what we did and therefore we were able to achieve this we were able to get this kind of success so the shared practices or shared learnings rather than saying okay we this is our secret you know we are keeping it to ourselves and uh, we will not share it with others and we will continue to you know rather than doing that when we share what happens is that everybody grows together okay whatever you have learned and whatever has caused a broad success in your life when you share then it is crossing the growth of another person right um so that also you know creates an environment and uh, people become more committed and so on right uh, mutual respect of course you know removes all toxicity or anything that is um, you know um, which is the opposite of health for a relationship right so this is this brings about a fact that okay people are actually looking forward to working together you know they are satisfied and this satisfaction factor is very important to create a win win relationship right when it comes to leadership so so when, when a person is like totally you know they are they are staying in and they're saying okay i have to do it uh, let's say a job you know i have to do it what to do i have to survive i have to pay bills uh, then it it won't be for a long time but they're always looking out when can i move out right? when can i move out for a better place better opportunity when can i move out you know um, that is their constant thing they're not able to give their best but if we create an environment where people are saying okay you know i really enjoy being with these people right i really enjoy working together I, because i'm learning something i'm giving something contributing something and therefore i'm also growing right um now that gives a sense of satisfaction now when when that is there then people actually look forward to it saying okay you know i look forward to uh you know being with these people i look forward to working together with these people no matter what how big the challenges are right how tough the situations are okay right so that is the satisfaction principle so that brings us to the end of um, that section on uh working with people winning with people okay any questions on that um okay um so what we do is we'll uh, we'll move on to um this whole uh, the next section which is on teamwork okay this is also a very practical section just like the previous one so we're just kind of moving up you know uh, as individual leaders then we looked at winning with people because people are part of you know uh, who what we are leading and what we are doing and then we look at teamwork so um this is something again we can put into practice right um okay so if you if you look at the word team okay several things come to our minds you know i think the if you're a sports person you think of the team right cricket or football you know um if you're a uh, you know person who's involved in music then you can think of music teams or choirs and so on right um so a team is just two or more people okay even if there are two people then you call it a team right so two people now are they just two disjoint people who are there you know that's not what a team is a team is two people who are actually working for together and they're working together for a common purpose right there is a common purpose so which means in a team there is a common purpose in a team there is this understanding that we are working together for that common purpose right um there are uh, several you know acronyms or short forms for team right um together everyone achieves more that's the most common thing right? t e a m together everyone achieves more or together each achieves more together everyone achieves miracles and so on right so actually uh, uh, we we used to do this small exercise when we had the um, you know 
where if you try writing out new things, you know, new acronyms, right? Um, T E A M. You know, probably you can even try it out. Okay, apart from the ones that we see in the notes, if you can think of anything else, maybe one or two. Why don't you take a minute to do that? T E A M. Right now, right now, you can just try that. You can think of how many can you write, but it has to make sense. Okay, it can't be tomorrow, every day, something. <laughs> but it has to be, you know, something on team, uh, and you can actually leave out the ones you see in the notes. There are about three listed here, so so you can, um, yeah, online class also you can. Um, Just see how how many. We just just take a minute, okay? Um, Done. T E A M, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, um, yeah, what we'll do is um, let me. Um, okay, so I just want us to, okay, maybe three of you and then three of you. Okay, so how, how many did you write? Okay, what is the first one? Team effort achieves miracles. Okay. Um, okay. Online, you can just post it. Okay. Whatever you wrote down. Uh, anyone else? What did you, did you write something? Try. Uh, try everyone across milestones. Try. Uh, it's a little disjointed, but I think you can refine it. Okay, so now what? What? Uh, Anand, anything? Trust, enthusiasm, ambition, motivation. Okay, so again, four separate words that you just put together. Okay, so that's there in the team. Okay, so so what I I I just thought you know maybe uh, the three of you can join together and see what else, and and maybe the three of you can Nina. Francis and Nichols and uh, join together and see, okay, um, so each of you had what, two, one, one each, right? Now, just by putting together, you have three, but see how many more you can come up with, okay? Um, same, uh, yeah, and uh, okay, together everyone achieves more is, uh, yeah, Nina, that is there in the notes, so I was just um, thinking uh, apart from that. Okay, so what I'll do is I just want to put you in breakout rooms, uh, online uh, folks. Okay, let's see if I can um, uh, and just set up. Right? Okay. Okay, there's. Uh, Is everyone in uh, breakout rooms? Uh, 
I think you will have to accept, I think. Um, um, Okay, um, are you all in breakout rooms? Rupus, Patel. Okay, only Rupus is missing. Um, let's see if I can assign. I think you'll have to click on join, accept it, I think. Okay, so. Uh, is see how many how many more you can come out with right come up with What you did, uh, <laughs> Google. Mm. So you can then there'll be the fourth person in the team, Chat GPT. Um, okay, I think um, Nina has come out of the breakout room. It's, it's you're you're. you're You've done, is it? Your okay. <clears throat> okay, so ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Okay, so everybody's out, out of the rooms online, folks. Okay. Oh, there, there wasn't anyone there. Okay. Um, okay. I, I, I don't know. Actually, I assigned. I'm not sure what happened. I see. Okay. So, yeah. So maybe uh, breakout room one. Who was in breakout room one? Maybe you can share whatever you've. Um, Whatever you came out with. Okay, so let's hear from the uh, in-person class. You can use the mic. How many? Okay, somebody can pick up the mic and then share. Uh... Uh, yeah, time, time is over. Time is over now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We time is over. So. Yeah, you can you can share uh, like how many uh, you receive. I mean, how many you you've got? Um, uh, actually, not uh, only when also completed, but in progress, more than five. Like, more than five. Yeah, okay. Together, together, together. Talent topper is the first line. What? 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 <laughs> <laughs> we found the T and some of the other letter, but E is little confusing. Uh, Okay. <laughs> so you're working on that. Oh, I see. So you decided to 
write some five things <laughs> but then to first uh, word you got okay i see first letter you finished and anything completed together yeah. sorry 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 total engagement and the motivation total engagement and motivation nice right anything else that you completed and motivation hmm uh, anyone online uh, what you uh, were able to discuss in your groups you can you can just post, post it on the chat so i can see it okay you guys um yeah ah uh. one more thing uh, try it till end of the time always motivated try till end of the time try it till end of the time but always till motivated. try till is, uh, okay. is one till. one oh. okay try but again try end off so off is actually it has to be just four four words okay okay oh, okay go go ahead yeah topper efficient and multi purpose <laughs> yes. okay, these sound like hashtags <laughs> okay uh jackin has uh, shared something to together everyone achieves marvelously marvelously well actually it has to be one word together everyone are see the r and more uh, probably we can just drop the more together everyone are powerful uh, together everyone achieves more is uh, i think it's already there try everything and maximize nice um, okay so, uh, i think ravali was in a group right ravali and uh, two others um, what is it uh, was it jackins group Okay, so you guys. Um, yeah, we wrote a more master. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, you got. Okay, yeah. Seven is uh, trust and trusted abides more. Trust and trust and trusted abides more. Trust, interest, and trust and trusted. Trust, interested abides more. Trust interested abides more. more. So, what does it mean? <laughs> it has to make sense. Okay, next one. And next one is uh, trust everyone to accomplish more. Trust everyone to accomplish. accomplish two we added in between. Two you added. All this within brackets is not allowed. <laughs> but trust everyone Accomplish accomplishes more. more. Okay, then. And now. Uh, Together, everyone accomplishes more. Trust, we made it to together. Mm. And uh, achieves together. instead of achieves, you put accomplishes. Uh, achieves is uh, already there. Accomplishes, okay. Then and another one is uh, truth entrusted achieves more. Truth entrusted. So, what does that mean? When a truth is uh, trusted more. We can achieve. Oh, I see. When you when you trust the truth. Hmm. Okay. Another Sh one is yeah. talent energized accomplishes more. Talent energized accomplishes, accomplishes more. more. Okay, that makes sense. Mm. And there is another one. Everyone together annoys me. Together, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Who came up with that? <laughs> okay, so we have Shivakumar's uh, total experience attains miracles. Okay, nice. Okay, so the so the thing is this that um, you know you realize that uh, it, you know there are there are definitely more ideas when you put when you come when you know you put your resources together when you think together when you brainstorm together there are definitely you know more ideas. Um, some so so that just goes on. Um, you can oh sorry yeah you can continue there. So so it, it just means that um, you know when we say more people, it it is more resources, right? More strength, more ideas. That is definitely you know it's it's a known thing. It also increases you know if you're a leading a team, 
if you're a team leader, it increases the potential of the leader. In what way the leader is free to focus on his or her strengths, right? And uh, there are others who are able to focus on their strength. What is their strength? So which means the potential of the team and the team leader goes up. And the weaknesses, right? In case there are weaknesses, those are minimized. Right? Because by, you know, suppose I am weak in another area, but someone else is strong. So that balances out, evens out, right? So, so that happens. And uh, of course, uh, when you win, you share the credit, you know, you share. And then when there's a loss or if there's a mistake, then you share the weight of that responsibility also. You know, the fact that, okay, something didn't go well, but as a team, we would take the responsibility for it. So it's not just one person who's bearing the brunt, right? Uh, of the failure, or even one person taking pride in, uh, or you know, boasting in success uh, or achievement. Right? There is a team, and it keeps us grounded. It keeps us humble. Right? Okay. So a lot of lot of things happen uh, because of teams. Right? Um, the word of God. You know, we see like like we were sharing sharing the in the previous class that. Um, the Lord sent out the disciples two by two. Okay, just reading from some scriptures here, Mark chapter six and verse seven. And he called the twelve to himself and began to send them out two by two and gave them power over unclean spirits. Luke 10, again, when he sent the 70 also, he does the same thing. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few, therefore pray, and so on we see. right? Pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So the Lord, when he's sending, commissioning, he's sending them as a team, as a small team of just one other person who's uh, you know additional to yourself, right? Uh, Ecclesiastes talks about how two are better than one, and there is good reward for the labor. When they fall, one will lift them up, and companionship, and etc. Right. So, uh, so this is what we. This is what happens, right? Um, if there is a you know uh, interest or passion um, in a team, you know it it just energizes the team, right? And if there's a courage, it is tested, and so on. Um, being teachable expands the team. Relationships influence the team. Responsibility strengthens it, and uh, when we work together as a team, it greatly multiplies whatever the team is doing. Right? Um, then why is it that some people avoid teams? Right. So there is so many advantages when you work together as a team. We see a biblical pattern also, like uh, the Lord sending out two by two, and then we see Paul. Uh, as the uh, use being used powerfully, you know, anointed person who whom the Lord used to write two thirds of the New Testament, great revelation um, and uh, the great power in ministry. At the same time, he worked together as a team, right? We see, and who are part of Paul, Paul's team? You know, just one look at Romans chapter sixteen. Gives us, you know, um, we see, you know, so many people who are part of it at different points in time. Um, so, so that's the thing. So, why, why is it that some people still avoid teams? Okay, one could be that because when you're working in a team, that means that you are not supposed to do everything, right? You do what you can do best, and you you understand what your responsibility is, and you carry that out. And the other person does the other other part. Okay, so if my pride does not allow me to let go of certain things, I'm saying, oh, I only I can do it. Only I can do it well, right? And I I don't want to let go. Or if I'm unwilling to admit that this other person also can do a good job, they can maybe even do a better job than me, right? If I'm unwilling to do that, so pride comes in the way of uh, working together as a team, okay. And the other thing is also insecurity or a, or, a, or a kind of fear that if I let go, 
you know it, it's actually when you're working in a team you're actually empowering the other person okay so you're empowering the other person and saying okay you do this you're saying okay this person well this person does a good job they will get recognition okay and you're willing to let go of that right empowering the other person so if you're unwilling to empower saying oh then the credit will go to this person yes of course obviously it is a team but then what if this person goes beyond where i am right what if this person gets recognized more what if this person gets appreciated more right so that will that prevents people from working together you know that kind of thinking that kind of mentality okay now we might say okay that will never happen in ministry that can only happen only in you know uh, so called quote and quote secular work fields work workplaces no you know it can happen everywhere it can happen anywhere anywhere where people come together for a common cause this can happen okay, there could be insecurity because of which people don't work together in teams right um or it could even be uh, you know what if my skills and abilities become redundant okay what sorry redundant in the sense see my i'm i'm no longer wanted this is a fear so i i am skilled in this now here comes another person who is also skilled in the same way i am and so you know what if you know i'm i become obsolete or my skills are not wanted right so fears like that okay. uh another reason could be just a very simplistic understanding okay of the task you think that okay yeah i can do it i can do it by myself no problem i can do it by this time by this day and i i can do it myself which means that is a very naive or simplistic understanding of the bigness of the task or the complexity of the task right uh, maybe there are certain things that we can do by ourselves but the the more t- complex the task is the project is and if there are so many things involved then we or one cannot do by themselves right so uh, especially if it is a big production like a like a theater production you know church is planning you see that so many people are involved so many people are involved um how many of you were part of the uh, the creative arts conference yeah we were all part of it right we participated part of the creative arts conference and so we see saw that everything was done in a very seamless manner there was no break you know one thing flowed into the other and it was but then behind the scenes you see that a whole lot of people were involved involved in the ideation you know generating ideas involved in planning out whole thing involved before the thing during the meeting i mean during the whole conference and then even after that so you see that there's a whole bunch of people involved in it so it cannot be done by one person you know because the task is so complex there are so many things involved and one cannot do it so if i have a simple understanding no problem i can do it you know uh, then if it's it, it is what we would call as a very simplistic or a naive understanding of the we underestimate underestimate the effort underestimate the complexity of the task and then as a result there is you know we don't participate in a team or get a team together right um the fourth one would also be temperament you know in the sense if i as a person if i am used to working alone okay i just work alone i get the job done because team involves interacting team involves a few other people apart from myself so temperamentally if uh, if i prefer to just be by myself okay um i'm not outgoing i don't want to participate you know it involves talking it involves asking questions it involves so many other things so if i'm not comfortable doing that temperamentally you know if i prefer to be by myself then that is also a hindrance to working together in teams right um and lastly it could be because of our past experience you know maybe you worked together in a team and maybe some things did not go well right we were unsuccessful and and maybe because of that past experience of failure of some hurt you know uh, 
So some people will say, you know, I'll never work in a team. You know, we've heard, you know, people say, you know, I'll never, I'm never going to be part of a team again. You know, I'll just come and I'll go. And I'll never do anything together in a team. I've had enough. I will just come. I will just go. I'll do what is bare minimum, and then I will go. So, so what happens is we miss out on the joy of, you know, accomplishing something together, you know, as a team. Okay. So, so which means that we need really need to realign. Okay. Think about it and say, okay, if that is because you know we cannot avoid working in teams. Okay. As as people who are getting trained for ministry, um, either we will be part of a team. Or we will, you know, we will be leading teams. Right? We cannot avoid that. Okay, so we need to get used to that idea of teams, and get better at how we can function as a, you know, in a team. Right? Either we are part of a team, and you know, there are certain things that that involve uh, how a team can actually do well together. Okay, so it, we need to kind of reflect and uh, uh, realign and you know, pray and all that. So. Um, so here are some questions, you know, that we can look at. You know, am I unwilling to admit that I cannot do everything? Am I unwilling to admit that others can do a better job than me? Right? These are, you know, these are questions of humility. Right? We need to ask. Insecurity. And am I willing to empower others because they might go beyond me, or they might be successful, more successful than me? Right? Or do I desire to maintain control over everything? And uh, I'm unable to trust others. Right? I want to control everything. I want to control the outcome to such an extent that I'm unable to trust. Um, do I fear being replaced by someone who is more capable than me? Right. Um, see, one thing that we talk when we look at insecurities, uh, one verse which I think we've looked at it over and over again, but uh, just worth mentioning again is John chapter 14. Right. John chapter 14, and uh, this is the Lord's instruction to the disciples. John chapter 14 and verse 12. Okay. Um, you see the Lord saying that more assuredly, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. So the, the Lord is talking about the empowering of the Holy Spirit, that he will go to the Father, he will send the uh, Holy Spirit, who will empower the believer, empower the church, right? And so he's saying that he will do the works that I do. So he's comfortable, absolutely comfortable with that. And in fact, he desires for us to do that. And he's also talking about the greater works, right? Than these, he's saying he will do. And he is desiring that, right? So the Lord Jesus being our example in team leadership or being a member in a team right he's the example so which means that we are comfortable this is what the lord desires of me so why can't i have the same expectation and the same desire of others for others as well right so which means that you empower someone to do the things that you do you know teach train empower so you don't have to fear being replaced. You don't have to fear being, you know, actually the more you give, the more understanding and learning you receive, right? Okay. Then do I underestimate the effort involved, the difficulty of the task, and therefore fail to accomplish them? Uh, temperamentally, do I feel introverted and therefore find it difficult? Um, you know, I don't partner with people. I create barriers. So, so these are some questions for us to think through. You know, and in every season of our lives, right? Whatever kind of leadership we are involved in, it's good to think about this, uh, reflect, and say, you know, what is actually preventing me from working together? Right? What is preventing me from reaching out and involving another person in this task? Okay. Okay. Right. Some interesting quotes. I think we'll, uh, yeah, probably we wind up after this. Um, how many of you know Michael Jordan, basketball player? Huh? What? Michael Jordan. Okay, so he's a basketball player. Um, 
uh, and I think the shoe also Nike Air Jordan. It's named after him, branded after him. Um, talent wins games, but teamwork and intelligence wins championships. Okay, so uh, I, I forget which World Cup it was, where um, I think it was the work. Was it finals or semi-finals? I don't know. Germany versus Brazil, I think. Okay, if you're watching, if you watch football, so. Uh, in fact, uh, let me let me see if I have those pictures. Um, one second. Yeah. Okay, this is an old one. So let me um, share that with you. I'll stop with this one sec. Um, okay, is everyone able to see this? Um, no? Okay, so this is... Um, okay, so Portugal has Ronaldo. Okay, this, is, this is slightly old, 2019 we're talking about. So it means 2018 World Cup. Okay, Brazil has Neymar, right? Argentina has Messi. Germany has a team. <laughs> right? So that year, Germany actually won. None of these other teams who had star players, uh, you know, highly built, highly the celebrity players, none of those teams won. But Germany, you know, has a team and Germany won. Okay. Um, just to go on to say the fact that, you know, teamwork. You might have great talent, but teamwork is what will win or give you endurance, long-term wins, right? So that's what Michael Jordan says, that uh, it's teamwork, actually, that um, that wins championships. Okay, You can win a couple of games because of uh, talent, but if you're, if you're winning a championship, the, the big one, the big trophy, then you need teamwork. Okay, Steve Jobs, does everyone know? Steve Jobs, Apple, iPhone, okay, um, visionary, uh, is no more. Okay, great things in business are never done by one person, right? They are done by a team of people. Okay, the business world understands that. Right? John C. Maxwell says, teamwork makes the dream work. Okay. Sorry? A team of two friends is what? Oh, I see. Okay. So they, they want a team of two friends, is it? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, correct. All these big uh, organizations. Yeah, yeah, true. Very true. Okay. So teamwork makes a dream work, but a vision becomes a nightmare when the leader has a big dream and a bad, big dream, dream and a bad team. Okay. Okay. So next class, we'll look at, you know, a, we'll go through a checklist. Okay. If we are leading a team, Okay, if you want a team to do well, what are some things that needs to be there? Okay, right. okay. Thank you. God bless.